It was Napoleon who had such a passion for chicken that he kept his chefs working round the clock. What a kitchen that was, with birds in every state of undress, some still caught and slung over hooks, some turning slowly on the spit, but most in wasted piles because the emperor was busy. Odd to be so governed by an appetite. It was my first commission. I started as a neck ringer and before long I was the one who carried the platter through inches of mud to his tent. He liked me because I am short. I flatter myself. He did not dislike me. He liked no one except Josephine and he liked her the way he liked chicken. No one over five foot two ever waited on the emperor. He kept small servants and large horses. The horse he loved was 17 hands high, with a tail that could wrap round a man three times and still make a wig for his mistress. That horse had the evil eye, and there's been as many dead grooms in the stable as chickens on the table. The ones the beast didn't kill itself with an easy kick, its master had disposed of, because its coat didn't shine or the bit was green. A new government must dazzle and amaze, he said. Bread and circuses, I think, he said. Not surprising, then, that when we did find the groom, he came from a circus himself and stood as high as the horse's flank. When he brushed the beast, he used a ladder with a stout bottom and a triangle top. But when he rode him for exercise, he took a great leap and landed square on the glossy back, while the horse reared and snorted and couldn't throw him, not even with its nose in the dirt and its back legs towards God. Then they'd vanish in a curtain of dust and travel for miles, the midget clinging to the mane and whooping in his funny language that none of us could understand.